I'm very, very excited. I was since yesterday. I was. I felt that that fire inside of me. I was really, really excited. Was it, was it harder to take a nap today? Yeah, a little bit. I, I mean, I took a nap, but I, I can sleep. <laughs> In terms of the game, it's all, all I expected. I really love how fast it's going and the way we play, simply. I know it's just preseason, but for sure the, the games against OKC, OKC are going to be interesting. Yeah. You know, I plan to play on a, play a long time, and I'm sure he does too, so um, there'll be no choice but to, you know, go back and forth. And we cannot wait. This is going to be a matchup that we're going to get to see for years to come. But we have waited for this. What was your first impression of seeing both Chet and Victor? Well, again, they're both very similar players. Obviously, what Wimbenyama is a little bit different. He's bigger, has a little bit more versatility, in my opinion, but very similar players. But when I look at how are you going to guard them, they're both being guarded by perimeter players. If you watch the start of that game, you see Josh Giddy started on Victor Webinyama because it's like he doesn't have the size. And so he's on the perimeter. He's in transition, as you see. But the next step for him is becoming a post player. If he can take the smalls into the post and force a double team, we've already heard San Antonio talk about his passing. That's where that next level for him. That's where the strength comes in because he knows he has the size to shoot over guys. You don't want to guard him on the on the perimeter with the big because he's going to be able to have that skill work to go by him. So you got to put a small on him and they can cr get into the space. But then that next step for them is can they take him to the post? And I think Chet and Victor have very similar trajectories for what they need to do to become dominant in the league. Yeah, I'm going to go e even bigger picture. This is a new era for the NBA. It's no longer the times where you have one star like a LeBron James or even going back a Larry Bird or a Magic Johnson that has to shoulder the development of the game. Now we're seeing stars revive franchises and do it on their own terms. Obviously, we talked the last few years, maybe the last decade, about positionless basketball. This is it at its finest. This matchup so good that I was like, is this a real game? Should we go back and count it as a real game, not a preseason game? But what we're seeing through Victor Webanyama, as we said, he could be the face of the league. The league is not built that way anymore. It's where individuals shine. But what he's doing for this franchise and also just the state of the game, the same way that Steph has, seeing his versatility on both ends to me was wild. Yeah. Offense will come and go day by day. But his ability to get beat and still maintain plays and defensively have all this potential, it's a different time. Look, I pride myself in not getting FOMO. Usually I have POMO. That's I am proud lie. to miss She's out. Lying. She's I lying. I felt like I missed, missed out, out yeah. on not being in the building for that preseason game. And would you have called Victor Wembanyama possibly the, gr the, the greatest prospect in any sports history. But what is the temperature right now inside the San Antonio Spurs when they're seeing him pull out these moves in actual games at this point? Yeah, this uh, they knew what they were getting. Everybody in the league knew if you won the draft lottery, you were getting uh, a tran transcendent player. And I think this Chet Holmgren, Victor Wembanyama rivalry, it started a few years ago uh, when they were playing for France and USA right. and the World Championships. And Holmgren got the better of Victor. And so these are two players who have history together. You have this traditional rivalry with San Antonio and Oklahoma City. It was born, reborn again last night. Oh, and I cannot wait to watch it continue to play out over the course of the season. We promised you some Zach Lowe and Big Perk. Here they are as promised. Uh, Perk, I want to start with you here. Wemby, Chet, every bit as advertised. Who showed you the most last night? Well, you know what? It was Victor Wembanyama because, yes, the Spurs got lucky. And yes, the Spurs are blessed to be able to have a player like Victor Wembanyama. But guess what? Wimbiyama is blessed as well to go to an organization like the San Antonio Spurs. And when he got drafted there right after Summer League, I said he needs to make sure that he spent the entire offseason with the San Antonio Spurs, and he did just that. In Summer League, we saw at times that we were questioning, hey, he needs to put on muscle. He did that. We talked, we looked at him, and sometimes he looked off balance. He didn't look like, he didn't look that way yesterday. And so what I see is a guy that is willing to sacrifice at a young age, that is willing to embody and embrace the Spurs coaching and teaching, and this is a perfect marriage right here, and it's only con going to continue to grow. Look, I'm not going to turn down the excitement at all on Victor Wembanyama, but Chet is not to be overshadowed here. 21 points. He looks like he's going to be a force this season. Zach, what stood mm -hmm. out to you from Chet? 
21 points and one great tweet, but Chet, <laughs> get the emojis out of there. No laughing, no smirking emojis. We need some spice in this rivalry. These teams have had three at least epic playoff series recently, 2012, 2014, 2016. Let's bring it back with some spice. But yeah, we'll talk about Wemby later. Chet? He showed off a really diverse offensive game last night. Just a couple of little things to highlight if we go to the tape we've got ready of Chet. This is a simple, just look, his handle was so tight in this game. And like the spin move, teams are going to start spin, sitting on that spin, but it's tight in traffic, and that's hard for a big guy. And just this is what the threat of a big man shooting threes can give you. Josh Giddy can post up. Lou Dort can roll to the basket. Shea Gilders Alexander, when he plays, can post up. And that lane is clear. Those corner threes can fly. He's a really good all-around offense player already. You don't see his handle last night look tighter than Victor's. And that's, by the way, Victor's 7-4, whatever he is, it should be a little tighter, but it looked good in traffic. I love no it. No doubt he lived up to the hype here, my friends. But, Zach, what impressed you the most watching him for the first time on an NBA floor officially? Victor versus Chet, except Chet played center and the Spurs played Victor almost the entire game at power forward, which means he guarded wing players and was guarded by wing players. And RJ mentioned he wanted to see him play a little bully ball in the post. And my favorite thing, if we go to the tape, was that we did get to see him do that against swings. You put Jalen Williams on him? Yeah, I'm going to back him down. And here comes Chet Holmgren. And look, the Spurs spacing is all screwed up here. He can make that read. He's a great passer. And when the Spurs get better spacing, he'll do it. Quick seal. Just run right to the post. Draw a foul. Yeah, maybe a little ticky-tack call, but I love the mentality. And defensively, he again is over in the corner. Can he still impact the game? Yes, indeed. Switch on to Josh Kitty. Cut him off. Switch back. Cut him off. Go out. Jalen or Isaiah Joe's got it. No, I'll just swipe the ball from you. That's a guy who people thought of as a center, and he's not playing center, so he's not at the rim. He's not in the pick and roll, and you think, can he still make an impact defensively? Defensively up to his talent last night the answer was yes he was everywhere even when he was on the sideline it was like he was right in the paint I think the conversation surrounding Victor Wimanya but there's been no doubt right guys that he is the number one pick the hype has been there he has backed it up thus far but the question has been okay durability what's that going to look like when it's not necessarily Chet Holmgren that he's facing it's Joel Embiid it's Giannis Attentacumbo did you see any flashes of anything last night today that said you know what I think he's gonna be just fine oh because he's a San Antonio Spur because he has a franchise and organization that looks like they're master planning around him. And I think the question was, as Zach you know, alluded to, what position will he play? Because a lot of times when you're that big, I know this personally, you think, oh, if I'm playing the five, I'm going to get beat up. I'm going to go against uh, Anthony Davis's, Embiid's, Jokic's. They have a whole system in which he can thrive and also feel free. It's not like you see him banging. He goes to the paint, he gets fouled. Instead, he's free, he's liberated. I mean, it was a behind the back in transition yeah. that led to, to the next offense. So for me, I think the system right here will be his protection and his d durability. But there's a difference, right, between playing in Europe, Richard, oh. and playing in the NBA. Yes, Tiago Splitter told me. And we're going to go to the board real quick. Tiago Splitter told me. I was like, hey, Tiago, as a big, what's the difference between the NBA and playing in Europe? He goes, hey, in Europe, point guards can't block your shot. So in Europe, he might have one or two guys that can blow by him. Here, you got Lou Dorn. He can't shoot. Better shooter. You don't need to be that close. So he's got to understand the space and the distance of guys. Here, he draws a foul. You got to understand it. He's got the length. He's got the size. A contest in the NBA is good enough. Here, right here, gets cut off. He is dead. The internet is going to kill him. Look at the crossover. What? This man comes back off one step and gets a clean block. Beautiful at the rim. Now, look, their whole bench, if you didn't see it, there was a timeout called right after this, and the whole bench was like, yeah, you see the coaches walk into the huddle and was like, man, I don't, I don't know what we're going to do with that. The dude is elite. He has so many skills, but it is very impressive how he's brought it all together. But he's got a lot of learning to do, and there is not one teacher in the NBA as good as Greg Popovich, so I'm 100% sure he's going to get but everything the one, he needs. But the one thing you alluded to, especially with not being so close to Lou Dort, is scouting report. That takes time. That takes, that takes time. time. But it's also, there's a quickness gap. There's a quickness gap and athleticism gap. He hasn't had to go against guys like Does John Morant. Does he need to be quick, though? No, 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 no. Hear me out. What I'm saying is understanding. There's guys like John Morant yeah. that can jump that guard. You yeah. don't have that in Europe. Yeah. There are guys like, Ru true. like, like Russell Westbrook yeah. that are just so fast. You, the more he That's learns, scouting report. 
it's scouting report, but a scouting report ain't going to help you understand how fast that man actually that is. is. That's purely experience that he will get. But there was a lot of things that I saw there that were more of like, oh, once he figures this out, oh, once he knows <laughs> I'm seven foot five, I don't need to be so close that I go on a Lou Dort pump fake and he drives by me? Right. Wait. Follow-up question. Do you think he could be a defensive player of the year? 100%. Okay. Multi-time. Okay. Multi-time. Okay. He's too Agreed. versatile, too does, okay. does too many things. If yeah. I wasn't pumped for Victor before, when, when Richard has that energy going up <laughs> right? to the I am ready I'm ready. to Not run control. Control. I got his first Not game. Control. Perk, final thoughts. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, he's 7'3". That doesn't make him a center. This is positionless basketball. When I watch him offensively, I look at a 7'3 Kevin Durant. The way that he's moving, his shot-making ability, and his ball handling.